Vielen Dank, Herr Präsident und dem Ausschuss. Thank you very much, um, President, and thanks to the EU President and to the Committee of Regions as a whole for this invitation to uh, come and meet with you. I was only too happy to take this up this opportunity uh, to discuss the current state of play in the negotiations. You, of course, have got um, your own remit, and I'm sure that you'll do all you can to speed up your part of the operational um, uh, program preparation work. Of course, it's true to say that uh, we work in parallel, both as regards the uh, financial negotiations and also in discussing the, the detailed matters, given the and with the regions and local authorities as well. We need those uh, negotiations uh, and the member states as well in order to get um, a prompt agreement on the partnership agreements so that we can then pave the way for the operational programs. And then as soon as we have an agreement on the budget, uh, as soon as we see the general regulations, we'll then be able to uh, get stuck into the negotiations with the regions and with the member states. Uh, and on the Commission's side, our objective is to get a seamless transition from one programming period to the next. But of course, this does require an agreement before the um, summer holidays on the multi-annual financial framework. Since this is a precondition, if we're going to get an agreement on the regulations in October, because uh, clearly there is no uh, point in claiming uh, um, linkages in this area, but of course um, the money which is available uh, this year and also in future years, and we've had uh, lengthy discussions, clearly we've got to underpin them, guarantee um, for any given year that money which is to be spent in the regions, which is going to the um, ultimate beneficiaries, can be paid back. If the Commission uh, applies for a supplementary budget, then this is primarily looking at the extra um, payments, payment applications from the um, member states and the regions. No one is asking for extra money in the like of, of um, increased administrative costs. The supplementary budget is purely there to defray the applications for payments which have come from the member states and from the regions. Um, yes, indeed, we've got an 11.2 billion top-up application in. At present, there's agreement on 7.3 billion. However, it's important that we get a political decision, a political agreement, whereby if there is an agreement on the multi-annual financial framework, then this will provide a framework. We need a framework in um, autumn to get the difference between uh, that figure and 11.2 billion. That's a figure which we have worked out very painstakingly, very carefully. And it does depend on the, it's based on the, li the likely payment claims coming in from the member states. Now, with regard to those negotiations, um, I would like things to go up a bit in terms of the tempo, the pace of uh, negotiations. I'm sh I understand that there is full support in the uh, Parliament. The presidency has got certain, there are certain um, log jams. Many things are happening simultaneously. Uh, we need simply to, that's a matter of record, uh, but of course it does not help us. However, I have every hope that uh, to some extent we'll be able to stay on uh, track and on schedule because um, so much has been clarified at the technical level. Uh, therefore, for the political debate, in other words, the trialogue, there is relatively little um, outstanding 
on, in terms of the, the themes and topics down for our discussion there. So much of the substance has been cleared out of the, of the, off the table. And this means that the trilogue can focus on things such as ESF, minimum share, macroeconomic uh, conditionality, things such as that. These are the, the big question marks which will be attended to still at the political level. Now, in conclusion, as at my um, appeal to you as representatives from the local and regional level is uh, to make sure that those preparatory um, that work in preparation can be can proceed as expeditiously as possible. Um, our hope is that by July we'll get proposals for the partnerships. And I trust that that will be um, the case with a very few exceptions. Some, of course, are getting compliance by putting forward proposals um, where there is room for improvement on, in terms of quality. There, in other words, um, certain member states are going to be meeting the formal requirements um, at a time when there is room for improvement on the uh, qualitative side of the of the programs. So um, let's not uh, lose that from sight. Um, the principle is first come, first served. The countries which come forward soonest uh, with their programs, the quicker, um, the, the better they work on the operational programs, then the sooner will be progress thereon. Um, and that means that the money will then be um, available in the course of next year. We are not going to wait, of course, until uh, the 28th member state has uh, submitted their, uh, their programs. It would be unfair to have 27 member states um, cooling their heels and waiting for that. So this is a, a kind of very uh, constructive um, emulation or competition, which I think will help everyone along. I've been asked to comment on some of the issues raised by you, uh, President, and just say a few words about the, the view from the um, Commission's perspective on the question of multi-level governance, partnerships, partnership. These are not just um, empty words. This is a serious uh, announcement of our intentions. We intend to pr monitor developments very closely. There is agreement between Parliament and Council at the end of last year to the effect um, that the Code of Conduct would not be retroactive or retrospective. We have had very intensive uh, discussions on that, on that front, and I think that we have now cleared an, a first important hurdle, and with the um, active support of uh, the Committee of Regions, can I just thank Mr. Schwabsky in particular with the opinion from last November, which um, underlined the importance uh, in your eyes of multi-level governance. And we will certainly be following this very closely to see um, the intensity with which accompanies this when it comes to the multi-annual financial uh, framework. And we'll be keeping a watchful eye on in terms of monitoring that. There are partners at regional and local level must be involved uh, very closely. Every two months, we have officials at the negotiations and um, elicit precisely that kind of information. And uh, we will keep the Committee of Regions um, up, uh, abreast of development, and because we currently have the appropriate pathways and conduits for that flow of information, so that in the regional regions and, and um, locally you can keep track of things. I'm actually quite surprised that how many member states are involved even now, and it's clear that this is very broadly based. Um, so we are seeing progress in that area. Now, can I say, I asked Luke van den Brande, um, and it's something which I think bears repeating. At the end of those uh, negotiations, 
there will be a report on the situation in individual member states to see what the initial experience is of implementation. Um, and this is important if the subnational partners are going to be fully factored into the equation. Once again, can I very warmly thank you, President of Alcartel, for the very active um, cooperation that we have seen, that we've enjoyed in this area. Um, this is something which deserves to be given recognition in different member states. Um, there are different institutional um, architectures. Sometimes it's this legislation whereby the regions have got um, a more prominent position. In other countries, decisions are taken at the, the higher level, as it were. However, we have got uh, evidence, evidence to suggest that with a strong regional involvement, um, ownership is more pronounced. And this um, stands the Member States in good stead at the implementation phase. Uh, so this is our watchword. Um, the Common Strategic Framework, this is unique in a sense. And it's the result, the fruit of close cooperation um, between the different structural funds, not just uh, the regional social and cohesion funds, uh, but also rural development the EARDF and fisheries and um, EMFF. To cut a long story short, the Commission there uh, wanted to have a delegated act, which proved not to be possible in the course of uh, negotiations. And now we have uh, made the necessary modifications. The important thing being that there be sufficient flexibility uh, to permit a response to development. Um, the thing now is to find the best ways of um, allowing that to materialize. There was not a complete identity of views on the part of Parliament and Council. Uh, we made a proposal for um, changes. I think the necessary steps have now been taken, which will take us to a sensible and, and workable solution. And that means that the strategic framework is taken in two sections. Um, and the changes have been made with the annexes. This means that um, the Commission will be able to achieve the objectives which it has set. Macroeconomic conditionality is a subject which has always been very um, emotive in terms of our discussions. There are countries where the regions have got um, a, uh, are able to contract debt um, in terms of the, the law which uh, prevails. And uh, you might think that um, this would have a bearing on the quality of national performance. The important thing there is that in the course of recent years, regional policy, um, and you've been involved in this, but regional policy has moved to more to uh, stage center as being the manifestation of a genuine investment policy. And uh, regional policy, therefore, has um, assumed its proper and uh, prominent position when it comes to the growth discussions on a policy for growth and finding an appropriate um, economic guidance at the European Union level. And if you look at this um, in that context and recognize that at the end of the day we, you do need to have a, a stick, in other words, a, a sanction, a penalty, I would urge you to see the, uh, the sense of that approach. Um, this need not be an emotive thing, although it has raised uh, passions. The important thing is that regional policy um, should be implemented by the member states. It's not intended to prevent um, regional policy from being implemented. 
but it's intended there to provide extra guidance to help to uh, hold the ring, if you like. Um, and you've got to have um, basically the different sides operating on an equal basis and um, having a sanction there, having a stake, as well as the carrot is perhaps the way to, to do that. That's certainly the rationale, the thinking behind this. Uh, but it's there only as a last resort. Um, and I think that having that instrument available may well be conducive. And it may mean, in fact, that um, there's less likelihood of it being used simply by the fact of its very existence. Can I thank you also for your support uh, when it comes to the strong involvement of local and regional authorities. I am confident that that will continue to be, well, it will still be required in the next few weeks and months. I think that in the next few weeks and months, um, indeed days, the focus will be on the parallel uh, negotiations. On the one hand, the MFF, the multi-annual financial uh, framework, and also the regulations when it comes to the partnership agreements and also the operational programs, uh, that's all very much in the, in the pipeline. It's not a bad thing for them to proceed in tandem, in parallel, provided that there is a sufficient uh, concentration and uh, uh, that the resources are there, the effort is made. Certainly, having the operational programs in, in good time uh, will stand the member states in good stead. Let's not forget the regional policy, the structural funds are the central investment vehicle um, for economic and social and employment to be promoted across the European Union. And I believe that this is the way also to attract, to engender private investment as well. And that's why um, an early agreement is uh, the name of the game which will provide us with um, clarity of how much money will be available for the regions for the next seven-year period. And um, we believe that this will then um, trigger an investment boom in the private sector. That, in, in any case, is our intention. Thank you very much.